Hi guys, want to say a few words about ancient Rome. So uh, early Rome, city founded in 753 BCE, Julius Caesar assassinated 44 BCE, late empire, Constantine, uh, before that, Vesuvius erupts, and as you, I'm sure you know, buries a couple of cities. Uh, carrying on with what we mentioned in Greece, I'll, I'll just say that uh, one of the homes buried in Herculaneum was the Villa de Papyri, the, uh, the home of the papyrus, uh, a place filled with scrolls and believed to be the summer home of Julius Caesar's father-in-law, um, so when you go to the, the Getty Center in Westwood, which we mentioned is a somewhat reminiscent of the Acropolis, that's, a, build, that's a, a campus that was created after the death of J. Paul Getty. But his original creation in his lifetime is a little bit further out in Malibu. Um, and he called his architect one day and said, I want to recreate the Via de Papiri. So um, the Getty Villa, here's um, Christine Johnson, former Art 110 TA, showing us the floor plan. And uh, all of this classical splendor and Art 110 students having fun out there. Um, so again, uh, being inspired by and in resonance with. Uh, but so let's back up a little bit and look at this uh, early empire. And let's just focus on two emperors, um, Augustus and Trajan. And I'll let you think about the Pantheon and the Colosseum and all these other places. Uh, on your own, but Augustus, um, so uh, so uh, Julius Caesar's adopted son, right? Octavian becomes Augustus, and basically, as a Roman emperor, your job is to wage war, conquer lands, and then build stuff celebrating yourself. Um, so here's the Arapacus, the peace altar of Augustus. So in contemporary America, it's you know after the death of JFK or Ronald Reagan that the Democrats or Republicans want to name everything after them. But here you got to build your own monuments. And so Augustus builds this peace altar, his gift to the people, um, but then uses the carvings on the sides of it to talk about, uh, to, to sort of create a divine lineage for himself. So it's a, you know, he's building this thing for the people, but it's a nice piece of marketing. So, you know, it may not be the Staples Center or whatever, but it's kind of the, the Augustus self-promotion center. So um, we'll say more about this structure in a moment, but let's, let's go. Oh, here's Augustus, by the way. Uh, he's currently on world tour, so if you can't catch his first show, he'll also be appearing in Vegas, Atlantic City. Uh, so uh, he, he gets around, even at his age. Okay, anyway, so let's say a little bit about Trajan. Okay, so Trajan, uh, 53 to 117. Uh, Emperor 98 to 117. Uh, during Trajan's reign is the time that Rome is at its largest extent. And so like Augustus and everybody else, he builds stuff, uh, gifts to the people, celebrating himself. So here is the Forum of Trajan. See, nice building. Uh, great, but I don't want to talk about the Forum because what I really want to talk about, see this thing sticking up in the back? I want to talk about the Column of Trajan. So the Column of Trajan is, uh, I find, pretty exciting um, because it's one of these places where people with different interests intersect on one object or moment or something that just seems to resonate in different ways. And so the Column of Trajan is an interesting piece because art historians really love this piece. Um, and interestingly, graphic designers really love this piece, but they love it for different reasons. So this thing's actually much bigger than it looks. Uh, there's a spiral staircase inside. You can walk up to the top. And art historians love it because of the carvings that spiral around this piece. Graphic designers love it because of the, um, the carvings in the base. So let's, let's look at this. As you can see, um, there's all these ornate, elaborate carvings. And once again, it's, it's you know, singing the songs of uh, Trajan's many victories and all of his efforts in this. As you can see, this is just one little piece of this spiral. It's in incredible detail of, of all his adventures. Okay, so that's what art historians um, get off on. Graphic designers, however, so this is the base, and as you can see, it's is larger um, than you thought because there's these doors that you go inside. This is what graphic designers love is this uh, inscription above the doors in the base of the Trajan column. So let's zoom in, and so here it is. So what's so great about it? Why does anybody care? Well, the carvings in the base of the Trajan column are generally considered to be the finest extant example of Roman typography. 
Okay, great. So, uh, let's go forward to modern times. So this is Carol Twombly, who I think actually has retired now um, and is farming or something. But for, uh, for quite a number of years, she was sort of the star or one of the two stars of the, of the amazing team of type designers at Adobe Systems in Mountain View, California. She created a lot of fonts, and one of her fonts was called Trajan. Um, and like many other typographers before her, she studied really carefully the typography at the base of the Trajan column, created this font. It's been used for everything, like carving in stone, uh, creating logos and flags. And interestingly, for some reason, what her font has really had incredible success at is movie posters. So I will let you click all these links yourself. There's a, I put a bunch of posters here for you, but um, it's, it's just a Trajan fest, Trajan, Trajan, Trajan. And actually, I have a couple more links for you. Um, if you click here, there's, so if you click either of these, it'll launch a video that you can watch. So I don't know how many fonts are, are famous enough to get their own video, but Trajan has two really pretty funny videos that you may enjoy um, uh, hearing about. Anyway, so, um, so that's Carol Twombly and her famous font. Let's go back to the Arapacus. So back to Augustus. So here's this thing. Now you might notice that the Arapacus is in fact not outdoors. <laughs> it seems to be surrounded by this window stuff and some kind of ceiling. What's, what's up with that? Well, um, the Arapacus survived 2,000 years of history just fine, but in the modern age, it could not survive acid rain. So uh, it's disintegrating. So they had to um, house it, move it and house it to, to preserve it. Uh, so the New York architect Richard Meyer was hired to create the Arapacus Museum. And as you can see, we are inside the museum with the Arapacus and we're looking out through these windows. Let's go outside and you'll see now that we're at the people uh, ground level at the base and that he's, here are those windows, these windows here are up here. And you'll notice um, that there's some stuff written on the side of the base of the Arapacus Museum. And um, you'll never guess what font Richard Meyer chose to use to write on the base of the Arapacus Museum. Um, if you guessed Trajan, you would be correct. So when you go to the Arapacus Museum and read uh, the, the writing on the side of the building uh, and look at this typography, you are looking at a Roman emperor influencing a California typographer, influencing a New York architect, creating a museum for a Roman emperor. <laughs>